Works YouTube channel. I'm Kelsey. We're going to be doing something just a little bit different. We're going to be interviewing Loose Entry Rally team about their recent experience at the Olympus Rally. They did such an amazing job at this rally and I really feel like their experience truly highlights what it's like to be a novice. This was an exceptionally tough rally. The conditions were crazy. And so let's dive into the interview because I'm really excited. So I'm Sage Van Tilburg uh, and I'm the guess, chief financier of Loose Entry Rally Team. Awesome. Uh, co-driver. Uh, yeah, I'm Peter Link and I'm the co-driver slash uh, half mechanic. <laughs> and crew chief. And uh, I'm Jake Mutter. I'm the crew chief for Loose Entry Rally Team. Awesome. Well, thanks uh, so much for you know, coming along on this little adventure. I've never interviewed a team before. This is my first time. So I'm pretty excited. Um, can each of you talk a little bit about how kind of you got into rally or any previous experience you have? Sure. Um, so at least for me, uh, I had volunteered at a couple events in high school and, you know, totally got hooked on it from that. Just seeing the cars go by and working course and being a road marshal, et cetera. Um, I always sort of knew I wanted to get involved a little bit more somehow. Um, in college, I'd you know, finally bought my first car and did rally cross, averaged, you know, maybe three events a year, just doing them at Dirtfish or doing them at, uh, you know, what, whatever venue was local to Seattle. So made it to a couple events a year for a couple of years and then uh, finally bought a stage car last January and then, you know, kind of tried to make the real thing happen. So. Awesome. Go ahead, um, Peter. Yeah, so. Uh, I have had absolutely zero prior experience with anything related to rally. Uh, I've been involved with motorsports of various, uh, like, yeah, of various kinds, but uh, um, I've never been involved with rally. I've never been to a rally cross. I've never volunteered at a rally event. I I really didn't know what it was all about going into the weekend. So it was, it was going to be a fun experience either way. All right, <laughs> Jake. And I would say my uh, experience is similar to Peter's, but with even less racing experience. <laughs> so uh, I met both of these guys in college through um, the Formula SAE program that we were all a part of. And that was kind of how I got my feet wet with um, racing and working around a, a race vehicle. Um, and so when Sage told me he needed an extra pair of hands for this event, um, I was pretty game. So this was uh, very, very new to me. I'd, uh, I hadn't volunteered at a rally event before or um, otherwise been involved. So um, yeah, quite, quite fresh. <laughs> awesome. Well, I love that everyone is so green because it makes your weekend even more exciting and even more interesting, I feel like. Um, before we totally dive into the rally though, Sage, could you t tell us a little bit about your car? I mean, it's a yeah. BMW, which is, you mm -hmm. know, why I wanted to, to co-drive for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so the car is built in Florida, uh, sort of looked it up roughly 10 ish years ago, maybe a little more. Um, I believe it actually started off as an automatic with a four cylinder, um, and was maybe even operated with hand controls, I think, um, was sold to somebody in Colorado. They did, you know, the manual swap and put in a six cylinder in it. Um, did a couple of rallies along the way, did Pikes Peak, I believe. Um, got sold to a guy up here in Seattle. He did uh, one stage rally with it and um, a couple of rally crosses and then he had to move down to California. So he had to unload the car a couple months before I had decided I was kind of, kind of ready to get into it and make the commitment. And it came up and I'd rally crossed a BMW and was kind of familiar with working on E36s. So it's already kind of a good match and test drove it and totally fell in love and it's an awesome, awesome platform. So super fun. And yeah, so it's pretty basic, pretty bare bones, nothing too crazy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm completely biased. So I think it's an amazing car. <laughs> um, all right. So let's kind of get into the weekend then. So Friday started for you guys, that's reconnaissance, um, which is like reconnaissance is difficult you know, can be very difficult for any team. Um, even with a lot of experience, there's a lot that goes into it, but you guys had like an extra hectic time mm -hmm. with reconnaissance. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how that went, uh, went and, and Peter, you stepped up like a lot on Friday. So uh, can we talk about that? Yeah. So it's just real briefly. Yeah. Reconnaissance was, uh, 
like as smooth as it could be, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of mileage to cover and a lot of the transits were pretty long. So as it was, we probably weren't going to get the full two passes on some of them. Um, but overall, it went pretty smooth. Um, you know, the, the gentleman who had come up and was slated to co-drive for us, um, he had co-driven, I think, three times before and raced three times before. So he was completely invaluable in kind of lending his expertise and guiding me through writing notes. And, you know, that, that was a whole process in and of itself. Um, and then Friday, you know, something came up that was really unfortunate and he, he had, he had to go, of course. Um, and so just kind of looking at these two faces below me and saying, you know, when you guys got to get in the car and we got to make something work. So I don't know, Peter, if you want to take it from there. Yeah. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, you know, a couple months ago, Sage had reached out to a, a few of his past team members on the Formula SA team about, uh, preparing the car and possibly helping it at a stage rally event. And, uh, the, the subject came up of whether or not I wanted to make any sort of commitment regarding learning how to be a co-driver. And at the time, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to make the time commitment. And I knew that if I couldn't do that, that wouldn't necessarily be fair to Sage. And, uh, you know, he, he would probably be better off with someone with much more experience, but kind of just getting, getting thrown in the hot seat and having the trial by fire is, is, not a, not a horrible way to be forced to learn how to do it well and quickly. Um, so all in all, I think it was a really good experience and, uh, and, and I learned a lot more than I expected to this weekend, to say the least. Well, that's awesome. Um, so after, you know, you got done with recce, everything's going on. I know for me, I feel like Friday night is like, I can't sleep. I'm so excited. How was that for you? Like you're going to get to do your first rally in the morning. Yeah, I did, I did all of my not sleeping on Thursday night. And so by the time Friday were around, we'd gone through notes and gone through everything else. I was, I was so tired that I actually slept really, really well, despite being nervous. And at that point, I kind of figured, you know, we'd got through everything up to that point and the next day was going to happen. How was it going to happen? And so I wasn't maybe overly nervous at that point, but Peter maybe had a different experience. <laughs> I, I, it was sort of different. So that Friday night, we, when we went over how to do code writing, how to do pace notes, what all the pace notes meant, what Sage wanted to hear from his pace notes specifically. Um, it was, I, it was like three o'clock in the morning by the time I was finished doing all of that. So I, I completely conked out. I was real tired and, you know, the next day was a long day. So I, I didn't have any hesitation of falling asleep. I didn't even think I thought about being nervous. <laughs> I mean, being up till 3 a.m. the night before sounds pretty par for the course in terms of reality. So honestly, good to know. Top notch. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing something right already. So totally, yeah. You a major accomplishment. Um, so you guys started Saturday morning. I don't remember what time you started, but um, you know, Probably you had after 10. So. Okay, yeah. So not super early, but you guys had what 14 stages. Um and 325 miles total for the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and so what was it like sitting at the start line really for, for yeah. both of you? Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. It was a really cool experience. And obviously we had a lot in front of us, but again, we'd been through, you know, so much over the last couple of days to get that point. And even, you know, just more broadly, it's, it's a lot of commitment to, you know, get a car together and get all the, get all the safety gear together and get everything, you know, updated and past tech and, so at that point, I, I, I frankly felt some sense of accomplishment, even just getting to the start line saying like, hey, we did it like, you know, we're, you know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. But uh, I felt really, really good being at the start line. At that point, like being in the car, I was a lot less nervous and mostly just excited to drive and, and see what this is all about. So that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think I could second the maybe moment of clarity before actually going out. Um, I think that having been at tech with Jake the day before and getting through it so smoothly, it only took, you know, 20 minutes, which was something a little unheard of for us three with our past experiences. But um, once, once we got through that, it was a lot more calming and we knew we were ready for the next days, at least as ready as we could be. Um, and that, that sort of helped us just be, you know, it is what it is. Let's do our best. Awesome. Well, um, I guess let's kind of get into Saturday and kind of roll through what happened for you guys. I was sitting at home um, watching the times come in online, but I haven't really got to hear any stories um, from you guys yet. So I'm excited to hear that. Cool. Yeah. So I guess uh, 
I mean, something that was kind of interesting to me was that, you know, going, going into it, maybe my understanding of the sport was like say 20%. And within the, from starting to like the first five corners, I feel like my understanding of the sport went to like 60%. Like all of a sudden, so much made sense. Like all these things people have been telling me, all these things I've read, like all the videos I've watched, you, know, you get all that input, which is great, but it turns out actually doing it, yeah, lends a ton of clarity. Just like, wow, okay, this is what's going to be like, like, this is sort of kind of what, what we can do to control the car and this, you know, kind of pace ourselves and build pace you know, as smartly as we can. And, and so that was, that was a really cool experience. It was like just doing those first couple of corners and being like, wow, okay, this is what it's like. You know, we can, we can make this work. We can make something happen. Um, and so we started, you know, we had no speed factor and no previous experience. So we were at the back of the pack and there's a, a decent amount of passing going on for the first, you know, couple stages and catching cars. And then, uh, the first loop of stages was actually extremely technical. At least that was my impression. You know, a lot of elevation gain in spots, a lot of elevation loss in spots, a lot of really tricky off camber stuff. The weather was awful. Everything was just soaked, you know, so it was trial, certainly trial by fire in a lot of senses, um, a lot of surface changes. And it was just, just cool to be thrown into that. And no, I'd say no major drama. We were, you know, taking it pretty easy. We did get lost in the notes a couple of times initially, but, you know, we're able to get back on pace and that was kind of confidence building. And, and so I guess that was my impression of the first couple stages. I don't know what you had to say, Peter, but. Yeah, I, I think uh, the most interesting thing that happened for me was definitely a first. Um, I, I got very, very uh, car sick after the first stage. Uh, and, I, you know, I've, I've driven a lot of, a lot of different types of race cars at a, at a fairly high level. And it's something that I've never had an issue with even in the slightest and after we finished the first stage and I was you know filling out our time card and making sure we were transiting to the next place like in the in a correct manner and uh it just all came it hit me at once and I got really hot and <laughs> I had to step outside of the car and get some fresh air and it was it was an eye-opening experience for me, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, getting 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 lost in the pace notes was definitely a little nerve-wracking because I wanted to make sure that not only were we going to get through the stage quickly, we were going to get through the stage or stage safely, um, and that's you know a big part of that. And I think that once we started to be able to get back on track, once we got a little lost, uh, it made me understand uh, the pace notes a lot better, and it helped me like improve drastically. Just each stage we felt like we were getting more and more in sync and I was, I was doing a better job of calling them out early as early or as late as they wanted to hear them. And, uh, it was just, it was a lot of learning all at once. Yeah. yeah I think Kelsey, you got, you got sick, like a couple there's that the video that you guys put out and you had some onboard of that night stage and you can hear it through the mic. And it's kind of the same where Peter's kind of chewing on notes and then spitting them out and I'm, hearing noises through the intercom and I could, I could tell he was really not in good shape. <laughs> I'm not surprised you got sick. Don't feel bad at all that. Yeah, you no, I'm, I'm not surprised either, to be honest. <laughs> I don't it's know why Friday I thought it was. Usual. You know, I've, I've been in a race car. I don't get car sick. Like, yeah. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> turns out, yeah, turns out being a passenger is a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned briefly the conditions, but I would love if you could talk about it some more and maybe those who didn't keep a close eye on Olympus. Um, if you saw any of the photos, it's pretty obvious, but. Yeah, so Sunday was a little bit nicer, but Saturday, tons of rain, tons of fog, and it had been just, just dump and rain like the previous couple of days. So, you know, things were, things were soaked through. Um, during recce, you know, I'd, I'd never done stage rally, obviously. And so during recce, I was actually a little nervous about being able to like get up some of the spots because in recce, you know, it was just slicker and snot and some of the spots are steep and there's, some really rough spots and et cetera. And just being in a rear wheel drive car, you know, I, I didn't really have a sense of what it was going to be like. So I was worried about, you know, even getting through some of the stages, but uh, the stages actually held up really well as, as far as I can tell. Um, we had zero problem getting, you know, through any of it. turns out when you're going fast and carrying momentum, you, know, you just glide over bumps and you can carry speed up hills. And it was, it was no problem to kind of get through it, um, which was good. Uh, there was a couple loops of night stages and, you know, there's, tons and tons of fog and then rain and then you get into a clearing or another spot and it kind of calm down and then roll back in and so you were turning on lights turning off lights kind of dealing with that but uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun basically all the stages um that day were more in the trees and 
a little slower speeds, but there's a couple spots where there's some straights um, on the night stages where you, you know, could open up the car a little bit and get into fifth and kind of experiment with what that felt like, which is uh, satisfying. So. <laughs> How did it feel for you, Peter, in the co-driver's seat while you were trying to read? Um, it actually, I had taken Dramamine by then and I had completely calmed down. Uh, <laughs> by the time we ran, uh, I was still feeling feeling it pretty badly uh, the second stage of, of the day. But by the time we rolled on to the third stage after our first service, I was feeling pretty good. And uh, you did take a on, nap on one of the trains. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I also took a, took a, took a pretty good nap on the way home one time and it, and it made a huge, huge difference. But, uh, yeah, I, I was pretty good up there on out the night, the night didn't bother me. And interestingly enough, like throughout the entire time, like I know, I know Sage pretty well and I know him to be a very conservative, safe driver. So there was never a time where I was worried for my own safety. Uh, it, and I was able to tell that going through all of this, even as we progressed in speed, we were always in a, in, you know, at seven tenths, not 10 tenths. And it, and it was very comforting. Um, and, uh, that was, so I, I really didn't have any problem with it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I realized Sage probably needs some light upgrades, but <laughs> cause we were out driving the lights a couple of times, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And we were, we were kind of, you know, trying to be smart about it and getting that seven tenths groove, but, uh, there's definitely a couple spots where, you know, we were doing everything we could to kind of keep control, you know, a couple, couple corners, we overcooked just a little bit and, you know, had some front end troubles and kind of had to get the car to rotate. And there's one spot where he really overcooked it, maybe a little too much going into a right. Um, I was breaking, breaking, breaking. And then there was a pretty good sized ditch. Uh, it was on the co-driver's side, which made it even more attractive. <laughs> kind of put the car in the ditch a little bit and scrubbed a ton of speed and kind of hooked it around the corner. And so there are some spots where he kind of had that experience of, okay, we're, you know, nearing the limit. We got to kind of make this work and maybe not as much margin, but, but yeah, on the whole is, it felt pretty conservative and I think we were building, building pace in a reasonable manner. But, uh, I mean, like Peter said, you know, maybe I'm a conservative person in that regard, but it's, it's easy to say, but then all of a sudden you're in the car and every, every nerve is just screaming, go as fast as you can like, <laughs> race this car and go as fast as you can. So it's really hard, especially when the notes start to flow and you really kind of sync up and you start to get in a rhythm. You're like, wow, okay, this feels really good. We can you know, go a little faster, a little faster. It's, it was surprisingly difficult to kind of reel that back and, you know, not just try and push and, and really get after it. But Yeah. And with a, with a rally like Olympus and with so much mud and standing water, it's mm -hmm. very easy to fall prey to uncomfortable, uncomfortable. And all it takes is for mm -hmm. one corner mm -hmm. that just is slightly worse than the last five, you know, mm -hmm. and then you're way off. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, even just finishing this rally, I feel like was a big accomplishment um, for you guys. How was it for you, Jake, as crew? I mean, not often we get to interview crew, but I feel like we should because I, sometimes I miss crewing. Sometimes when we have a really stressful rally, I'm like, man, I could just crew and like sit here for three hours and not worry about anything until the car showed up. Um, but then like crewing you know when the car's in is, is chaos because you only have that little bit of time to fix stuff it sounds like sage did some landscaping in a ditch um so he he wasn't going to try to leave you out you know he wasn't going to leave you with nothing to do so how was that yeah um so kind of a similar experience in terms of uh all of a sudden having a little more responsibility than i was prepared for you know um i was prepared to kind of have all right like peter's going to be there peter's a lot more knowledgeable than me on some of this stuff in terms of like, all right, if there's a problem with the car and we got 30 minutes to fix it, um, you know, I would, I would have him there to kind of help out. So being all of a sudden alone for, for crew. And of course they were back in the pits with me for service, but you know, I had all that time to stew and worry about what could go wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, luckily we, we figured out a, a good way to communicate um, you know, when they were in transit or something, um, I was able to, for example, when Peter got sick, I got a, a text message, like we made it through, find a drama meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, the first thing that I'm running from pit to pit trying to find asking people for is pills. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it was really good overall, like that coming in for that first service, you know, I had kind of my list of things that I wanted to check out on the car. 
Um, and it held up really, really well. Like there, there weren't any major problems that first day. Um, later towards the, um, towards the evening, there were some water kind of ingress issues um, to the engine bay that we were gonna, that we kind of had to figure out and bootstrap a solution for that was semi-effective. But other than that, um, you know, there's, there wasn't too many crazy moments. We actually kind of had some time in that first service to take a breather and Peter got to sit down. <laughs> um, so yeah, overall it was, um, it was good. You know, you kind of, we kind of found that groove. That's awesome. And I know you ended up calling me asking for some assistance. I guess, was that on Sunday though? That was on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't think we knew what a penalty was or what the inquiry board or notice board was on Saturday. <laughs> I don't think we figured that out. So we didn't even know the right questions to ask. <laughs> you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. What was it like for you, I guess, Peter, trying to figure out the time cards and like getting Sage where he needed to go even between stages? I mean, we talked about the pace notes, but there's this whole other list of things a co-driver is supposed to do. Yeah, I think luckily... Uh, I've spent a lot of time at the ridge where we were pitted. So I kind of knew my way around the area pretty well. Um, so I didn't, when I was feeling really sick and I didn't want to look at a map, I could kind of just guide us back to the, back to the, back to the, the service. But uh, yeah, I think uh, the navigation wasn't, wasn't too bad. I was able to figure it out pretty easily. It was more just getting, getting my head straight, making sure I wasn't feeling sick on that first day and, you know, preparing myself for making sure I wasn't going to get lost in the pace notes. The big thing for me was because I hadn't actually gone out on reconnaissance and seen any of the stages. I had no idea what to expect. Like I, I knew what the corners were and I saw them on video, but it's sort of two dimensional when you watch it on video and every corner we went through was completely new to me. And it was, it was very difficult to decipher, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Schaefer, that second pass, that was probably the best we felt all day. Like, even though it was, you know, pitch black and conditions were worse, we we're really starting to figure out notes. I don't think we got lost at all on that stage. And yeah. and so, yeah, kind of addicting where you're really getting in the groove. And, and yeah, we cut off a bunch of time, so. Well, awesome. So I guess we'll get into Sunday, which is where things sort of, I guess, fell apart a little bit more um, <laughs> for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like you guys just ran um, Nuetzel. I hope I'm saying that right. I mean, Nuetzel, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that one, you ended up running that like three, so three times in a row, mm -hmm. um, which that stage was a lot faster. I was looking average speed yeah. for stages on Saturday was like mid forties. Mm -hmm. Um, and on Sunday they were, um, in the fifties as far as yeah. average speed. So considerably faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it described as a super gravel, super highway by somebody on Facebook, which I think is pretty true. So, <laughs> well, that's but, uh... awesome. Um, so we talked about kind of having some of those issues. So after you guys finished Saturday night, is that when you realized that there were issues with time cards or? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think so. So yeah, because of, you know, one stage got red cross. And so we kind of had to loop around and then got into, I think back to time control a little bit late that time. And then um, one of the evening stages, there was like some kind of hold up and consequently there was a line of cars that stopped control. And so we got in late then. Um, and so I'd like, we had some sense that things were not quite right. And it's also hard because we're the only one, you know, writing times on our time card because of, you know, the COVID restrictions. So the marshals or the, the, the volunteers at time controls were there just writing things on the whiteboard, but maybe a little harder to talk to them or get a sense of if we're doing the right thing. And so that's when we, we started to dig into, okay, we're maybe showing up late here and showing up early here or whatever, and kind of had some sense that we're going to need to get things straightened out, which I think some did of their own accord, like when the stage got red cross, I think we didn't have to do anything. They just knew, you know, cars were coming back a different way and, and that got figured out. But uh, yeah, we had to put in some inquiries and, and get some of that straightened out, so. So how was the Noetzel stage so, so much faster? I know you texted me, you said you kind of had a personal victory on that stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. So uh, we got really lucky that the other two stages were canceled just because that was that much less prep we had to do the night before. I mean, we were still, still up to 2, 2 a.m doing that night, but not having two more stages to go over the video and write notes and familiarize Peter with the notes that he'd never seen um, was huge. So I feel like we were decently prepared um, for that, that stage going into Sunday. Uh, and we also ran it three times. And so, you know, that was obviously helpful just getting to 
not only know the notes a little better, but at that point you can kind of get some of the parts of the road in your memory. Um, one of which was like a pretty long straight, uh, it was like a, a decently long straight into a really fast right into a really long straight. So we cracked hundred miles an hour. Uh, we caught air off a bump. Uh, there were two, two things that I wanted to do and, and we nailed it on the last stage. So yeah, that was really fun. And it sounds like um, Jake, he made more work for you on Saturday. So you, you actually did have more to do when they came into service. Uh, yeah, on, on Sunday from the, from aforementioned bump. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, the first uh, stage started with um, a, a text on the way back that they were, were dragging a muffler. Um, so that was immediately kind of the first thing that we had to work out. Um, and dealing with uh, sound from all of our previous FSAE experience was luckily something prepared for so sage had like a, a sound kit ready to go with some steel wool and other materials so we were able to kind of improvise a solution there um and then other than that it was putting bumpers back together drilling <laughs> uh, and zip tying i mean yeah, i saw cars that had none of their bumpers left by the end of the rally so you must have done an amazing job jake yeah we, we <laughs> passed a pile of bumpers after the water splash so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I saw that uh, Chase Havinga had lost the front and the rear bumpers and just mm -hmm. gave up on that. Um, yeah. How is it for you in the car, I guess, Peter, hitting speeds that high? I mean, you have a lot of other racing experience, but the feeling of going that fast on a loose surface like that is very different. How was that for you? Um, I, it, it was good. Uh, because we went through it pretty cautiously on the first time, I sort of knew that we were, we were pretty safe to go at that speed. Um, I may or may not have been sort of encouraging it a little more than I maybe should have, <laughs> especially as someone who isn't in control of the vehicle, <laughs> but it was good. And I, the thing I was most surprised about was how well the car behaved over all of those large bumps. The, the suspension was surprisingly put together and dialed and it was, it, we just, it floated over all the small stuff and the big stuff we hit hard, but the cards stayed together just fine. And it was just, it was really con confidence inspiring to, to, to know that that was the case. Peter, just tell me to let her eat whatever you want. <laughs> really go, go, go. <laughs> you guys survived near Wetzel. You had your awesome moment where you topped the car out. Like mm -hmm. that's something you should be incredibly proud of. It looks like from topping the car out, uh, definitely paid off because you were 11 seconds faster on the last pass. Um, but you finished the last stage. I was actually sitting there on the live tracker watching you go through the last pass. Oh, nice. And I don't know what happened to your tracker, but you went red on the stage and didn't move for a while. And I was having a freak out moment on the couch, holding my dog, like, oh, he's not moving. No, <laughs> it's the last stage. Um, so then I just sat there and like stared at your dot until it started moving again. And then I got up and like went to the bathroom and came back and then you were through the stage. And so I was celebrating. I hope you were celebrating. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was pretty surreal to like finish the whole thing. And cause you know, especially after being Ricky and everything we went through and it, you know, I'd, I didn't have strong expectations of finishing just because I know a lot of teams don't finish, you know, especially as a novice and with, you know, maybe not knowing how to do all the car prep we needed to do, um, which we didn't because water management was a big problem. But uh, yeah, it was, it was surreal. It, it completely exceeded my expectations and it was, it was an awesome feeling just to get through the last stage and know that we had, we had accomplished it. So. How about for you, Peter? Yeah, I think it was, it was awesome. I, I think it was, I think it was slightly surprising and also pretty incredible that aside from the muffler falling off and us and me sitting in the passenger seat, hearing it hit the belly pan and slot off behind us and thinking, oh no, that might end our weekend. <laughs> uh, that was really the only doubt I had from, for, from a finishing standpoint. It was awesome once we finished that stage to realize that the car really did hold up well and we made it through and uh, it was really satisfying to be able to complete the event 100% with, with no real issues. How was it for you, Jake, to see the car actually finally like pull back in the last time control? Yeah, so I was kind of like you, you know, 
refreshing the the app trying to see where the dot was at so once I saw that they were you know through the stage and on the road coming home I got ready at uh the final time control with my camera to snap some pictures I was like woo you know I was already in celebration mode really excited to to watch him cross the line because yeah I mean we we went through a, a lot more than I think we all expected there were definitely a lot of unknowns and um you know, we were kind of, um, I guess, prepared for, you know, for there to be some things that would surprise. Overall, yeah, I mean, the the feeling of satisfaction, I was just very, very glad to be a part of it, seeing how much work that Sage had put into the car and understanding the complications of, you know, co-driving, being in the room while um, the, the previous co-driver was coaching Peter through it. And I was you know, my mind was really blown with um, how difficult of a job that was going to be. Um, and uh, yeah, just very, very pleased to be involved. Happy to share in that success. That's so awesome. Sage, now you, you mentioned you had some issues with water in the car and I, mm -hmm. I saw a clip of that. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, so uh, the way the air filter was positioned was pretty far up in the nose and like mostly in front of the front tires and pretty directly above the skid plate. So I don't know, going over prep, I figured wasn't gonna be that big of a deal. Didn't really realize how important water is. And I'd like hit some hit some water splashes in you know previous cars and never had any problems. So I don't know, I, I figured it was gonna be okay. Um, but even even before like the big ponds and, and actual, you know, water crossings, uh, the previous day on Saturday, you know, there's some standing waters in the middle of, you know, I think it was specifically like a left two that we hit and then all of a sudden, had to, had some problems. Car started to choke out a little bit, and and so we dried out uh, the filter, you know, overnight. And Jake fabbed up some uh, some Keystone light cans, and we made some some water guards and some self tappers and uh, aluminum tape, and you know, made some improvements there, but still had problems. I don't know if uh, you know, the filter is still getting soaked, or when we took the filter off, there's a ton of just silt and garbage, you know, inside the the whole plenum. So maybe the math was coated with garbage and that point we'd also lost the exhaust so any number of things you know could have been could have been causing problems with the idle the car didn't really idle on its own after that and it was still making good power up top but you know, we'd cross cross that big water crossing especially and every time we'd be running on like maybe four cylinders and really having problems for for you know three or four or five corners and it kind of clear up but so some inter intermittent issues but yeah the, the car is still making good power up top and it would kind of resolve itself and annoying not to be able to idle but you know no no real problems besides that and again it's just like one of those hard lessons learned that you know now it was really probably something i should pay attention to when kind of going through the next prep cycle of the car and, and maybe changing some things around so well a plus plus effort on the keystone light cans jake that is <laughs> top-notch rally engineering right there <laughs> I'm a little disappointed that no one on our crew has ever engineered a solution out of beer cans. <laughs> that well, surprises me, actually. That was, that was, that was our uh, go-to solution for the, the first iteration of the, the muffler plate also. Um, so we almost got away with two Keystone Light solutions, but, you know, I'll settle for one. But yeah, Ooh, that I guess blew up the, all, the quarter all mile down the pro tips, bring a couple in, uh, empty beer cans. <laughs> I, I would love it if you could brag about how you guys finished. Yeah, I think we did fourth in class, which is pretty decent. So I'm definitely not going to say we were going fast because one of the Clark guys beat everybody else in regional in a very similarly equipped car and was many, many, many minutes ahead of us. So still a lot of work to do, but uh, you know, we're I think for a first showing is it, it was way better than I could have even hoped for. You know, I figured it'd be at about back of the pack, but. Um, you know, a lot of cars in our class ended up finishing and even beyond those, we, we did even a little better. So pretty good feeling, I guess, somewhat encouraging that, you know, there's, there's tons of fast people out there and we're, we're still just barely dipping our toe in the water and kind of figuring out what fast feels like. So. Well, Dave Clark does have like a lot of years of driving under his belt. So yeah. <laughs> don't, don't compare yourself to him just right off the bat and feel bad. But yeah, you guys were fourth in class in 19th overall out of just 42 of the regional entries. 
Yeah, and we we pass a lot of cars off, and especially on the very first stage, there's a lot of cars off, and there's a moment where like, what, what are we doing here? Because there's you know passing triangle after triangle after car in the woods and car off in a ditch, and that was kind mm -hmm. of a kind of a kind of a weird experience just passing the <laughs> carnage. So. Yeah, I think watching the map, there was like four cars piled up on that stage. And I kept getting like messages from other people watching, like, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't yeah. know. It's yeah, no, there's some spots where, you know, the, the course would wear in. And even when it was actively raining, there's still a pretty good like layer of really hard pack rock down below. Then you'd hit just one corner where it was silt or mud or just way, way, way slick and maybe a little off camera. And then we'd see people off. So. And there's probably times where we would have been off there if we hadn't seen the triangle and known to slow down because, hey, something something's going on up ahead. And so it's an advantage to being at the back of the pack because you see where everybody else goes off. <laughs> I Yeah, I definitely feel like that's probably maybe saved us a time or two is seeing somebody mm -hmm. else's triangle and slowing right down. Yeah, yeah. How was your first rally hangover? It's very real. I mean, you know, we didn't, we didn't drink or party. We had to tow the trailer home that day, but... I took Monday off work and I was somewhat out of commission just because it had been a long three days and I was exhausted and it was the whole weekend was way more work than I thought. And I know these guys had to go back to work, so I don't know how productive that was for them, but I won't comment. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was all right for me. I, I didn't mind it. It was fun. I kind of, I like those weekends every once in a while. It was refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> refreshing to get out and get way too dirty and way too tired <laughs> yeah especially in you know these days like I, I work from home so there are there are days where I spend a lot of time sitting um so you know reflecting on uh sitting back down in the chair on Monday I was like wow I was really going for it for like three days that was awesome it was very fun some of the excitement kind of carried me through the first part of this week Sage, do you have any sage advice for any of the new rallyists? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, obviously take it easy and you're going to get the red mist and I want to go fast, but uh, maybe one, one really key piece was writing notes of something that I didn't get just because I'm maybe a little dense, but uh, you know, the co-driver who's with me said, write notes. And he's like, do you want to put a distance here? He's like, no, do you want to put a distance here? He's like, you know, saying maybe distances will help the co-driver figure out um, where you are, you know, if you get lost or whatever and keep track of the corners. But in my mind, uh, the distances were, I figured more for breaking. It's like, okay, here's a hundred meters and you got to break in the next corner. But the way I was internalizing it was that, you know, I'm going to break, break where I see it and that'll be that. But actually getting into the groove of the notes, what I now realize is that, you know, if it's a right six into even a left six or something versus a right six into a 200. Well, if Peter calls a 200, then I know, the, the split second, I can see the hint of an exit, lay the hammer down and just go for it. So that was, that was a big, you know, light bulb moment for me. It was that distances maybe in the notes aren't as much for breaking, but in terms of uh, sort of sort of describing how aggressive you can be on the exit before you can actually see what's going on. So maybe that's my one, you know, very tangible tip is pay attention to your distances when you're writing notes. So. And any, any words of advice for you, Peter? Other, other than pack Dramamine. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that as long as you are educated as best you can going into an event, not just about what your specific duties are, but also about everyone else's specific duties. Um, for me, I would have, reading the pace notes as I was seeing them, something that was a huge light bulb moment for me was, even though I was about to read one note to Sage, I had already read the next one in my head. So I already knew what was coming, but Sage didn't. So understanding that I was going to have to read a corner ahead of more, a corner ahead of where I actually really wanted to uh, help Sage a lot. And I think just like at for a driver probably, or even a co-driver, just understanding what the other person next to you is, is thinking and going through uh, really helps you guys really helps us, helped us sync up a lot. So that was sort of my light bulb moment. <laughs> yeah, as the co-driver, you get to see into the future. Like, you know what's happening before he does. Yeah. Uh, any advice for you, Jake, other than make sure you bring plenty of cans of Keystone? <laughs> oh man, yeah, I think that one that one bears reiterating. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I think to, to kind of build off of what, what Peter said earlier, like really understand and, and know the rules and, um, you know, specific duties of everyone going into the race. I think that, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, like needing to or helping out with filing some of the um, inquiries and stuff into penalties that we had. So while they were looking at videos on Saturday night and trying to figure out their pace notes, I was skimming the rules and trying to figure out how that all worked. Uh, you know, we'll all be definitely more prepared for the next time we have to do that. But um, that's part of what, you know, paying attention to all those fine details is also what really got us through tech easily. I mean, Friday was a breeze as, as far as, um, you know, taking care of the car and um, crew duties were concerned. So um, we had our ducks sorted pretty well um, in terms of like the tech aspect of it, but some of the finer points, the rules, um, I think definitely bears, um, you know, putting some, some good study time in prior to the race. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, something that I feel like can be overlooked by teens are like, I'll just figure it out when I get out there. And then I see them out there and their hair's on fire and they're like, Kelsey! <laughs> uh, and I get some questions. I got some questions from you guys too, which was awesome and not really um, expected, but I'm glad I could uh, help out. Um, so before we close, let's see. Um, Sage, do you have any moments you felt like really helped you grow as a driver or any one moment in particular that built your confidence? Um, probably nothing in particular. Uh, but there's, there's just times where we were, you know, trying to find a rhythm and, and kind of feeling, feeling out the pace and figuring out how, where to, where to call stuff. And, and I was figuring out how to drive and et cetera. And then there's times where it felt really on. And like you said, it's, it's, it's almost like you can see the future because when notes are just getting fed and you're going kind of fast and Peter just be reading note after note after note, like it, it's a really cool feeling. And you know, just kind of feeling what that's like when it's successful and you're on rhythm um, was, I guess, good to set a baseline because then you kind of know when you're out or know when something's not quite right or, or et cetera. So it's just getting a sense of what fast, well, what not as slow feels like. Um, that's kind of a good baseline because then you know what to shoot for. So, anything that you're particularly proud of uh, from the weekend, Peter? Um, I, I, I'm sort of. I think the thing I'm most proud about is finishing. Not just because we finished the first rally event we went to, or we went to, but just um, all of the logistical challenges we had uh, regarding actually getting to the event and competing. Uh, I think really, really set the tone that we were going to finish that weekend, that, that weekend, uh, regardless of what was going to happen. And that was a huge confident boost. And I was really proud of that once we got through that. Let's see, as crew, do you have any advice for anyone that's wanting to crew? Any, is there anything that came up that you maybe didn't expect or? Um... Oh, man. Um I think there's still a ton for me to learn to be like a truly prepared, you know, crew member. I think that I was very blessed by um, Sage putting in a lot of work on the car prior to this event, because, you know, there, other than the, the water issue, which like, there's only so much we could do about um, the, the bumpers, which were, you know, it's a wear item. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's less cosmetic. Um, and then the uh, the muffler, which obviously uh, that was probably our, our biggest thing of the day. But um, you know, for the most part, the car was pretty well sorted, so I was fortunate there. But um, yeah, I think that if there was one thing I could have done differently going into the weekend, it would have been just um, kind of spending more time with the car and thinking through what spots would be um that was another kind of you know not being very experienced with rally and um being able to visualize kind of the abuse that the car might take um you know now i have a much a much better sense of like well the car is going to get beat to crap and what are some of the things that might go first so basically anything on the underside of the car i would have spent a lot more time kind of looking at and thinking 
you know, how might this fail? What can we do to protect it? And if it does fail, what spares or backups do we need? You know, what do we need to check to make sure that nuts aren't backing out or things like that? Um, so I, yeah, if any of that was coherent, that would be my advice for someone looking to crew. But I, I genuinely had a blast watching you guys and kind of living through that experience vicariously. And I'm really proud of all of you. And I really can't wait to see what you're all able to accomplish at the next event you can run. So I think you're going to do even more awesome. Cool. Thanks. And I owe you, Kelsey, like a ton of thanks because obviously we were planning to, you know, get together earlier in the year and make something work. And even after that, you know, that fell through, you're always available to answer questions and you always know who to get into contact about if I need something. And so that was super, 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 super helpful. And nice to have you kind of in our back pocket when we we're dealing with all the inquiry stuff and, and everything else over the weekend. So, so thank you for that. Well, enjoy your evening guys. Um, and like I said, I appreciate you joining me for this, this evening. And uh, I guess that's it. <laughs>